Hello everyone, this is part two of Disco Diffusion and how I created this video right here. Um, and uh, so today we're gonna dive into After Effects and show you pretty much how I created this and also um, mistakes that I've made uh, through other projects that I've worked on. Um, this is really a learning experience for me as well as for you guys. And uh, let me show you something I just recently shot. Um, I shot this and uh, after the fact, I realized there was a lot of things I could have done differently. I could have shot this on a tripod uh, and uh, really have made this a lot cleaner and nicer and it would have helped the AI a lot more. So I'll talk a little bit about how, like mistakes that I've made and how to avoid them so that you don't make the same mistakes and you can have a way easier time creating something that you want to make. So we have a couple layers here in After Effects. Uh, the first one right here in the bottom, I have the main clip that I shot. And then right here, right under these two layers, I have the AI clip. I shot this clip by rotoscoping out the background. And I talked about that in the previous video. So I recommend you rotoscope the background. You go here and you see the AI that's, un that's under this. And on top of this, you have the shape that was created uh, when I rotoscoped this. And when I created this rotoscope, what I did is I went up into layer and then I went to auto trace and what auto trace does is that it will trace the rotoscope that you have created and I created the shape and so I made a copy the reason why you want to make a copy with the shape mask is because you want to add this saber effect um, I'm going to show you where you can download this effect it's free it used to cost money but now it's free and uh, basically you need this shape to, um, for the saber to follow the shape and the way, the way you have it here. And that way it already follows the shape from the rotoscope that you did earlier. So let me actually show you the website where I got this from. If you go to Video Copilot, they have this plugin that's called Saber and it's totally free. You can download it right here. They have Apple, they have Windows. Google search uh, Video Copilot Saber and then it'll pop up right away. So you download it, you go into your effects and you go to Saber and there it is, Video Copilot Saber. You drag it onto this layer, the top layer. And then once you're there, obviously you open this up. This is typically closed, so, but you open Customize Core. You go to Core Type and you put layer mask. So then what will happen is that this will follow the shape of the layer. And then you come up here and you have different effects. You see like electricity, firestorm, a lot of really cool effects. So you can mess around with that. There's a bunch of settings here um, that I won't go over. You can just mess around with it or you, there's probably a tutorial out there that goes more in depth uh, in um, how to mess around with that. And uh, yeah, so that's essentially, you create th this mask from Auto Trace. It creates this mask and you add the saber to that mask. So you get this effect. So you have the AI on the bottom. You have the main video, which is this outside and then you have the saber effect. And that's how you get this section done. Pretty straightforward. Okay, so now you get to this part, the really cool part. For me, I love this part, man. This is like my favorite part. Um, you again have your main video, which is this whole thing out here, all this. Here's the AI layer. It's a composition. I made it into a composition and I'll tell you why. Um, 
when you click on here, you have several layers. Here I have the background. So I just made one short version and I made a copy of it and that's why you see it here. Essentially, it's like a loop. Um, so I put this under the AI generated version of my wife. <laughs> As I said in the last video, you wanna generate the background and the subject separately because when you do them together, it doesn't look as clean. It doesn't, the AI can't just focus on one thing. It's focused on several things and it starts to kind of mesh together a little bit. So separating gives you, you know, the separation from the background and the foreground. So I have the background and then you may notice right here, when you generate your AI, you're like, wait a minute, why do I still have a black background? How am I gonna get the black background out? So there's several ways that I do it. If you have slow motion like this, like she, like my wife's not moving a lot, she's moving pretty slow. What I do is I, I make a copy, the rotoscope version that I did earlier. This is what I exported earlier, the version that I used to insert into Disco Diffusion. Since this is already uh, rotoscoped, I bring it in here and all I really do is put it up on top of the AI layer and I alpha mat that. And so I click in there, it gets rid of your black background. If you see, there's a little bit of edges when there is a little movement. Um, you can see some of the edge right there because it doesn't align perfectly. If there is fast movement and you wanna, you don't want to see that black edge in your videos, what you can do is um, you can convert the AI layer into a pre-comp and then double click, go into Roto a brush, double click this, Roto brush, and then you can remove the background. Oh, you see, this is where it gets kind of tricky. Um, yeah, this is this is the part where you have to be careful because then, yeah, this is, yeah. Luckily in this video, the black edges are not as noticeable. I didn't really have to rotoscope the black out, but if the subject is moving slow, you can typically hide that. It's not as noticeable. Um, I will show you a video where it's not as, it's not easy to hide because uh, there is a lot of motion in it. So yeah, so you use that as a mask to get uh, the black out of the background. And then on top of this AI composition, we have a shape layer. And in this, uh, we create a uh, alpha mat so that it can, whatever's within that shape, as you can see, whatever's in that shape, the AI will only appear within that shape. This is the shape and I have it keyframed. Uh, I keyframed the, the path so that it would move around um, almost as if the portal is like unbalanced, you know, unstable. And so as you may notice, uh, there is something going on with the shape on the edges. It's not like, let me actually uh, take away the saber effect. If uh, it has this thing on here, on this shape, it's called turbulence displacement. And it makes it have like these wavy, almost like noise effect so that it doesn't look smooth. If I take it off, look at what it looks like. It looks like a plain smooth uh, shape. If I take it off, it looks almost like a, like a cool window or a piece of glass that has like this effect on it and i think uh this actually would kind of be a cool effect as is but uh since the shape is moving around uh i feel like it just didn't fit for this specific video so i added the turbulent displacement like almost like a uncontrolled effect so on top of this mask i duplicated it and uh added the saber effect on top of it just like i taught you earlier pretty much the same exact thing uh, you just mess with the settings however you want and it just kind of gives this unbalanced almost like portal kind of look and i know that the the bottom layer it's like it bleeds out right here a little bit 
but I, I like that effect. That was a little bit intentional because I want it to seem like it's like almost uncontrolled and uh, it's almost like it's bleeding out. That's the effect you can give it. And then at the end, she closes it. And that, you just pretty much just shrink uh, the shape and then everything just comes down with it. Oh yeah, before I forget, what I also did, I tracked this shape. I tracked the portal to her right hand and then put it onto a null. Yeah, and then I just I tracked it and then it just kind of follows this top hand mostly. If I were to do this again, I would have taken a screenshot without anybody here. I would just do the background. That way I can run that through Disco Diffusion and then have like a clean background and have it Disco Diffusion do its thing with that clean background. So I would get that image of the clean background, export it as a 10 second long video, and then plug it into Disco Diffusion and then have like the AI do its thing. What I had to do in this case, I didn't take a photo of the background. What I had to do was essentially go into Photoshop and then crop her out and then fill it with uh, content aware, which tries to fill in the, that space with whatever information is in the background, which is not the best option in this case, but you know, it, it, it worked. But if I were to shoot it again, I would do it. I would get the shot first, get a shot of the background and then with the, the person that's gonna be in front of the background. Also, this time I shot it with a tripod, which was great. I think that when it comes to AI, you get way better results when you shoot uh, with a camera that's not moving around. Um, you can move around, but I feel like uh, sometimes the AI uh, struggles to, to uh, keep track of what's happening. If you're moving slow, it might not uh, have that much is that many issues, but if you're moving fast, you might run into issues, which I did in another project, which I will talk about uh, probably next time, um, which is this video. Um, I'll make a video of how I did this one too. Um, this one, I had issues because the camera's moving and so I don't have a fixed camera where I can get an image of the background and then have the AI run the background and that made it very difficult. And then also there's a moment where she swipes and then any moment that the AI, like it's trying to capture someone's face and then some, and just, like a hand goes over the face, it, the AI struggles and it's trying to remember like the information somehow. And it's just like, uh, what was there, you know? And it just, or when you turn like really fast, your head really fast, or when you tilt your head le left, right, down, up, really fast, it, it really struggles to keep track of that. So the best results when it comes to facial features is to not move and not do too many crazy expressions. But uh, it really depends on what you're going for, honestly, too. Because maybe you don't want it to look like a face. Maybe you want it to look like a zombie or like something weird, you know, like a robot or something that's not a human. So I can talk uh, next time about this video what I did for this video. Um, and uh, yeah, so if you have any questions, definitely let me know um, in the comments, socials, whatever. And uh, I'll be glad to help with whatever I can. And uh, yeah, I, I just, I'm just excited to be able to uh, work with AI and do some cool effects. I, I don't know what the future of AI is when it comes to this video kind of stuff, but I just feel like it's just gonna get, you know, it's gonna get better and better and, and uh, Hey, if you can get on, if you can learn it before everyone else, man, you're gonna be ahead of everyone else and be doing some cool visuals. I really feel like it, it can become something big and, uh, but I also feel like it can become gimmicky at some point because of the limitations that you have. But I think it's cool right now, uh, but I'll continue to mess with it and see how, how much we can push it and see what we can do with it. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. See you on the next video.